Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Hope everybody's doing well. I'm going to wait till we see a few of our friends joining from wherever we are around the world. Okay, to please put in the comments where you are watching from so we can say hello. Welcome, everyone. Good morning. I don't see who's on. Say hi. <laughs> oh, hi, Shirley. Good morning. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Bev. Good morning, Francis. Hi, Becky. Hi, good morning, Pauline. Good morning, Kim. Yes, we're going to have those names down in a second. Good morning, Marilyn. Good morning, all my friends. Getting ready for another great share on Shah Batachan. If you haven't picked up the book yet, definitely pick it up. Okay, we're going to start off. Hi, Arlene. Good morning. Tell us where you are watching from. Good morning, Dorit. If you're watching from Toronto, if you're watching from Florida, Australia, Israel, let's know where we're all joining from. Hi, good morning. Hi, Hannah. Good morning, Dorit. Okay, so we're going to start off by saying Tehillim. And of course, we always give tzedakah. Hi, Marilyn, Miami. Everybody, please put a coin in. Good morning, Francis. Take a coin and say these words. Good morning, Becky from Israel. All right. Miami, Israel, Toronto. Good. We're doing good. Who else do we have here from different parts of the world? Huh? Helga, where are you today? Toronto? <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. We have Alyssa here and Corinne. Hello. Good morning, Corinne. Okay, and Clara's here. Good morning, Clara. It's good to see everyone from week to week. I miss you guys. Okay, we're going to start off with chapter 20. And we're going to say to Hillam for all those that need a uh, Rafua Shalema. I see we have names here on our chat, and I'll read you the names that I have that people had sent me earlier. Same amen when we finish with all the names. Okay. Yaka Moshe ben Necha, Yehudas Basari, it's Moshe ben Rachel Reza, Tsipur Hinda bas Rachel Miriam, Sarah bas Chana, Chana Devora bas Golda bas Yamanucha bas Emmanuel, Sarah bas Rivka, Yisrael ben Esther Golda, Nechamadina bas Esther Hadasa, Henya Tsipur bas Chai Yuchevet, Tobi Moshe ben Peru, Liran, Racha bas Shenda Leia, Rivka bas Chafitza, Leia bas Chafitza, Tsvi ben Chana, Chana bas Freda, Nachum ben Alta, and we have a few names here online. Okay, we have Shoshana Basara. And I think Kim put a name down. Kim, what's the name? I'm not finding it. Kim, can you put down the name again that you wanted us to say to Hillam for? Ah, there we go. First, let me say Yirmiyahu Bet and Chaya. And um, if there are any other names, feel free to put them down. As we get rolling on our Tehillim, say it with me loud and clear. If you have a Tehillim, chapter 20. Lamana Tseach, Mizmor le David, Yancha, Dinabiam Tsara, Yisagefcha, Shimele Yaakov, Yishlach Ezra Mikodesh, Umitian, Yisadeka, Yiskar Kom, the Chasecha, Valoscha, Yidash Nesela, Eaten the Chach, Vavacha, Vacola Tsascha, Yamale, Yurana Bishu Secho, Vashem, Elohane, and Nitgo, Yamalea, Dinai Koma Shala Secha. Ati adati ki yoshia dene mishicho, ya ne mishme kotre gvuras yesha yamina. Ela vareche ve el vasus and vanachna vishema denoi, elahin in askir. Hema korvin a follow vanachna kamenu veniso dud, a denoi hoshia, hamelach yanenu, viom karenu. Hashem should answer all our prayers. You know, today is Chof Gimbal Shvat, which is the day after the Rebbitzin's yard site. And there was a big, big convention in New York. And last night they were for bring-ins all over the world talking about the greatness of the Rebetzin and what she taught us. And so today is the day very close to Chafei Shvat, a lot of holiness surrounded in the day. I want to invite all of you that are studying with us to keep in mind that today is an auspicious day and have kavana on positive thoughts, positive energy, 
and only thinking positive um, thoughts about family, friends, and neighbors, etc. We're going to do a little bit of our meditation before we get started, right? As we're learning Shabbat Tachan, we have this thing that we like to do. Breathe in, B'Tachan. Breathe out anxiety. Try it again. Breathe in, B'Tachan. Breathe out anxiety. So we set ourselves up to a morning of relaxation, a morning of B'Tachan, and a morning that we're going to be infusing ourselves with a lot of joy, and health and prosperity and good news. And for anyone that's watching now that needs mazel and bracha and gesund in their life, focus now on just this positive energy I'm giving this year in shul. You know our shul, a place full of light and joy and hope and bracha. So all the words that are said in a shul carry with it hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands of people's prayers. You know, we get thousands of people in Shul that daven, and this room is full of that energy. So on that note, we're going to start our class. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Lauren. Good morning, Adrian. Good morning, Clara, Helga. And we're ready to roll. Okay. So we are up to Chapter 4. And Chapter 4 is a long chapter. We've been doing Chapter 4 for a couple of weeks. But I need to start off with something very, very, very powerful. Good morning, Faye. Chapter th- four is a continuity of what we were talking about for the last two weeks about wealth. And this week, there's an interesting insight that Rabbeinu Bachaya gives us. And I'm curious if this ever passes your mind, or you know people, hey, good morning, Mandy, or you know people that have this connotation or these thoughts or even fleeting moments that align with themselves with what we are speaking about today. It starts off with something very, very interesting. He says like this, what is the mistake that wealthy people make? He says, they pursue wealth not only for the money, but they pursue wealth for kavod for honor. Have you ever seen this before? Have you ever thought about this? They need this constant kavod. And why do they want wealth? Because wealth brings them honor. They see how the ignorant and the masses run after the wealthy. And they love how they're being respected and you know elevated to status because they have money so these people say i must become wealthy i'm gonna work myself on just so that i can really make it and become that person that the poor and the ignorant chase them i want to be chased i want to be honored they forget that who was really honored? Someone who honors Hashem. Someone who lives a life of sincerity and mitzvot. Now, it's very well possible that a wealthy individual is ran after with honor. Why? Because he does great things with his wealth. So people honor them because they build shuls, they build mikvahs, they build schools, they build hospitals. So they are given kavod because they deserve it because of what they did, not because of the account they have in the bank. And so the individual that wants this money, why? Because he wants to be honored. He wants to be chased. Let me come to your house. Let me honor you. Let me give you. Let me buy for you. Let me stand up for you. Let me take care of you. And the rich man goes, wow, look at that. They love me because I have money. This is great. You know, the story, there was written a story about Rabbi Gutnik. He was a wealthy 
Chabad individual in Australia. He actually wrote a book, something called about something with jewels and gems. And he was blessed with a lot of wealth and he gave a lot of tzedakah. But then he lost his money, right? We know that the wheel turns and sometimes Hashem has different plans. Sometimes the rich go down and sometimes the, the pauper goes up the wheel. Fortune is always turning. You know that, right? You can give me a thumbs up if you've heard that before. And uh, so he lost his money. Good morning, Barb. And one day he says to a friend of his, he goes, you know, when I was wealthy, everyone used to come to me for advice. They used to come to me for atis, right? And they would say to me, you know, Rabbi Gutnick, you have such good ideas. I need money for, I need ideas for my business. I need ideas for my school. We want to come and sit with you and get ideas. And why did they come to him? Because they wanted him to give money. But he says, I know why they came to me. They came to me because they wanted money. They didn't really want my ideas. But then I lost my money and I said to them, wait, I lost my money, but I didn't lose my ATIS. Why'd you stop coming to me? Rabbi Gutnick was a very down to earth now. And by the way, Baruch Hashem, his wheel of fortune turned again and he's doing very well and he gives a lot of stuff. Hashem challenges us. But he realized because he's a down to earth chassid and he learns Shar Betachan and he knows why Hashem gives us money, why Hashem takes money, and that every time Hashem gives us money, it's for a test. And what are we going to do? With, with this money, Arlene says, the poor house is around the corner. The minute Hashem gives you money, quickly give tzedakah with it. Don't wait to be put into the poor house. Give tzedakah, we said, 10% for the typical Jew, 20% for the wealthy. But this rich man who says to himself, I need to keep making money. I'm going to work hard, hard, hard. I need to make that money because I need that covered. But we're told that Hashem gives honor to those that honor him. And what does that mean? So we know that wealth, like looks, like good hair, like good skin, like if you're tall or short, right? That's a gift from God. Imagine people worship someone for their looks. Oh, I forgot they do. Have you been to Hollywood lately? Right? People that are the emptiest people, right? They value their looks and their figure more than their mitzvahs. And what does Shabbatachim teach us? That your looks and your hair and your height and your wealth is not something that you worked on. What is it that a person could work on? I'm going to ask you, those of you that are watching now, what is it that we can work on? We know what Hashem gives us. That we know. We know Hashem gives us wealth. He gives us talents. He gives us looks. He gives us a good head of hair or not. He gives us ability to, to, to cook and to bake. And he gives us ability to transform architecture. That's a gift from Hashem. But what do we have control over? Put it down in the comments. I'll wait a few seconds. Okay. Ah, Mandy, compassion. Right. So that's in our ability. I love that. What else? What else did God say? It's your choice, not my choice. What we do with what he gives us, good, good. But we know there's a pasuk that says, that everything is in Hashem's hands except for what? So we have kindness. We have our thoughts and our actions. If we volunteer or not, good. Kindness, kindness, faith, right? Those are things that Hashem does not give us. That, if a person has that, you have to recognize that that person's effort, that wasn't God. That was your effort. And Hashem says, Everything I give you is, from, is in my hands. But what you do with it, your kindness, your faith, helping the poor, beautiful, keep it coming. What else is in our hands? You tell me, you know, you know, you do things. Studying Torah. We're going to get up on a Tuesday morning 
and study Torah instead of just going down our Instagram or, you know, or, or, or going out for a coffee. We choose on Tuesday morning to study. That is your choice. And that is something that brings one covered. That's what brings you covered. When you have faith and your family knows you have faith, they start seeing you differently and they respect you. And I know you're not doing it for respect, but this is where respect comes from. A person who helps the poor, right? This Sunday, we're having a thing downtown at two o'clock. We're going down with barrels and barrels of scarves and hats and gloves, and we're going to wrap them around the trees downtown Toronto where the homeless live. And we're going to decorate the entire park on the street downtown. And it's going to be bursting with colors. And the homeless can come out and they can choose anything they want to take. When you go with your family downtown and you help the poor, you are making a tremendous statement to your children and to your family that this is how you spend your time. And inevitably, that brings you covered. Now, you're not doing it for covered. But these are the things that Hashem is saying that should bring you covered, right? Your faith, when one of your friends suffers a loss or suffers a challenge and you call them up, you say to them, don't worry, Hashem's got, God's got your back. You know, let's dive in together. Hashem will take care of you. you. You call your friend and your friend hangs up from you afterwards. You can't imagine what you've done for your friend. Yes, you could bring a cake and that's beautiful. But give them faith. Give your friends hope. Give them insight into godliness. Give them understanding and give them your time and give them value and give them patience. That is what Hashem says brings a person covered. Because money is not your choice. We say here, a donor needs to remove all labors. There is no giver or taker. There are merely two people fulfilling God's will. What is he telling us here, Rabbi Bahaya? He says, if God makes you the giver and makes the other person the taker, you can't put that label on yourself. You can't walk around like the big shot, I'm the one that helps. Hashem puts labels. Hashem decides who's going to be the giver. And make sure you keep on giving so you can keep that label. Hashem decides who will be the taker. And as I said the story last week, that sometimes we try to understand why are there poor people in the world if God created everyone and everything and he has the ability to give everyone the money that they need. Why does Hashem make poor? Because Hashem created the mitzvah of tzedakah so that you can give. Listen, when Mashiach comes, there won't be these levels everyone's going to be with enough of what they need but till Mashiach comes we will have the givers and the takers and then he says something else it is not wealth that brings honor it is good deeds that bring it and that is something that we just said if God gives a person a talent then he it must be utilized to its fullest because that is where the person will find his divine mission and this lends to us that something that we spoke about so many times, that when a person has a talent, and whether that is to create a vessel to make money, or whether it is to do kindness or to do great things out in the world, that talent was given to you by God. What you do with it is your choice. There are many people that have talents, but they don't use them, either for fear, shyness, they're introverts, they're reserved, they're private people. If Hashem gave you a talent, it's your responsibility. You know, I had a, um, I, you know, I run a preschool, Torah Tats, and I have this um, little boy that comes to school, just, just like, just adorable. And his sister came in to do carpool yesterday. So she tells me she moved from New York and now she's starting a dance school in her basement. And she goes, you know, God gave me the gift of dancing. And I think to myself, why should I keep it to myself? There are so many beautiful little girls out there that love to dance. 
I'm going to give him an outlet. And she started a Sunday program in her basement in Thornhill, and she gives dance lessons to little girls. And she says she had to start one class and built up a second class, and now she's building a third class because she's taking her talent and using it to help others. Arlene plays piano for residents in nursing homes and retirement homes. I know, Arlene, you play music beautifully and you share your music. In fact, we have these two incredible boys, Natan Fuchs and Noah Costa. And these two boys sing beautifully. And every Friday, they get onto our show Zoom and they sing. They brighten up the days for hundreds of people who tune in on a regular basis, Arab Shabbat. And believe me, they have a busy schedule. They're teenagers. You know, they have school, they have homework, they have assignments, they have friends, they have a life. But they committed for over a year and a half. They've committed to sing on our Arab Shabbat Zoom. And I know these boys are going to be blessed with blessings from Hashem because they could say, you know, we're shy, we're reserved, we don't want to show off. But they've taken their voice, they've taken their music, and they are sharing it with our community and beyond. And we have people that tune in from all over the world. And everyone says, like what Arlene and Khan are saying, that they have wonderful voices. And everyone should join in to hear them. That's right. You don't know what you're missing every Friday. In fact, I'll tell you another very interesting feature that we have on our pre-Shabbat Zoom. We have Chabad rabbis and rabbitsons from different parts of the world, um, from, the, from the Caribbean islands, from Australia, from Africa, the States, and they come on and they give a, a Dvar Torah. They give a little short Dvar Torah. And usually my husband says, if you're calling from a nice state or a nice city, go stand by the ocean or by the water with your palm tree so we can feel very, very comfortable and very uplifted by you. And they do. It's before Shabbat and these guys will stand by the water or by the sea or by the marina and they'll show us some beautiful places and they just uplift our beautiful, beautiful Shabbat Zoom. Um, but I want to speak to you a little bit about, you know, two things. When the rich person wants wealth so that he can get honor, what's psychologically really going on? So this is something that all of us can appreciate because in a way, all of us need this. But I want to explain to you why you don't have to worry about this, okay? People everywhere, us included, are looking for validation. Do you agree with me? Give me a thumbs up if you agree that people everywhere are looking for validation. And some people go to great lengths, so they will do big pompous things with their wealth because they need that validation and they need more and more and more and more of it. It, 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 it speaks to their essence and they think in order to have a wholesome life, they need to be validated by other people. But really my friends, who gives you validation? Who gives me and you validation? We know that God created the world for me and you. Every morning, we have to wake up and say, that God created the world for me. And that's validation. I don't need you know, Joey and Jackie and Michael and Esther and Estelle and, and Chaya and Melinda and Belinda to give me validation. I don't. My validation comes within. God created me. And every day that I wake up in the morning, he creates me again. And that is all the validation I need. When I say, When I say, Prayer validates me. It's saying that God believes in me. Rabbi Munasecha. God believes in me. And his recreating me is all the validation I need. But now I want to go back to the story that I shared on Facebook this morning. A little boy drowned. 
two days ago. He was stuck at the filter. Three minutes without oxygen. And my friend quickly, quickly shares on Facebook and on our women's group. We have a women's group. And they share, please quickly say to Hillem, say to Hillem, because he is now, unfortunately, very, very, very between life and death. And everyone said to Hillem. And yesterday she shares. And she shares this quote. She says, Hashem was truly watching over him. And the wife says, my husband did CPR and he has never taken a CPR course. But her husband and Hashem saved his life. He was caught underwater in the filter for three minutes. And then, miracle of miracles, the little boy opened his eyes and he says to his mother, listen to these words. I think I know why I was saved and why I'm here now. Hashem thinks that I am special. Talking about validation, a five-year-old boy drowns. His father does CPR when with God's help, he is survived. He is revived. And then the little boy wakes up and looks around. And when he understands the status of what his life was before, he says, I think I know why I was saved and why I am here now. Hashem thinks I'm special. So I quickly sent a message to my friend and I said, I hope. That this, this little boy is connected to a shul where he will be able to take his miracle and share it with others and that he will become now a lamplighter so that others understand that if we are here today regardless if we drowned or we were under a filter for three minutes do we have to wait to drown and to be revived to believe that we have validation that we have a mission What's my message for you today? To get validation for ourselves, we don't have to run after money. We don't have to make sure that the poor and the ignorant in the community give me honor. To have validation, you have to only look inside and see your neshama. Say, if God created me, God knows that the world needs me. And if I woke up this morning and I'm healthy, it means that God needs me today. Go out there and make a difference. Change the world today. One step at a time. We learned this from the Rebbitzin, the most humble, humble of all women. She was very, very royal. Imagine being married to the Rebbe. And as her black cleaning later says yesterday on a message, she says, when you walked into the Rebbitzin's house, she only referred to herself as Mrs. Schneerson. She never let anyone call her Rebbitzin. She said, when you walked into Re Mrs. Schneerson's house on president, you knew you were walking into royalty. But she was humble. In fact, you know that she never, ever came into 770, the woman's section, not for davening, not for her bringing. You know why? She didn't want kavod. She didn't want honor. She knew if she walked in 770, the place would split. She would be given the front seat. People would be oogling over her. Rebbe Tzachai Mushka did not want that. She lived humbly in the background without the limelight. She wanted to live by example of what it meant to be humble. Now the Rebbe, the Rebbe never wanted to be the Rebbe. He was one of the most self-effacing, humble people that walked the face of our earth. And for a year, the Hasidim begged him to become a Rebbe. He didn't want He was humble. But it was only till Rebbe Tzim Chaim Mushka said to him, if you don't become a Rebbe and leave these Hasidim, everything that my father did for the last 35 years will have been in vain. And she begged him. And you know that when she told him to take over the Chabad movement, she knew that she was very rarely going to have time with the Rebbe. You know when they had time? Five o'clock in the morning when the Rebbe came home from show. What kind of marriage is that? But she knew that she had a role to play in bringing Judaism to you. You would not be watching this Facebook class if it wasn't for the Rebbe. 
because the Rebbe empowered me to go on shluchas. Someone who never really studied Tanya and Chassidus enough, I never felt capable to teach, and the Rebbe empowered me to teach, and the Rebbe empowers you too. Each one of us that knows the Aleph has to teach Aleph. So I want to wish you all a great day. Take the gifts that you've got. Take the talent that God has given you and go make a difference. Have a beautiful, beautiful week.